everyone, Nathan here again. So we are back for part two of our WebODM adventure. So we actually just finished up with WebODM here. We downloaded the two files we need to proceed. So I'm just gonna close that. And we're gonna start off by launching QGIS. So I've just opened up QGIS. This is uh, 3.22. Uh, just for your information, if you want to play around with a LAS file uh, or LAS, you need at least, I believe, QGIS 3.18. Not totally sure, but 3.22 does work, and that is the current release for December 2021. So I'm just going to open up a new project here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off by simply adding our surface model. And we're also going to add our ortho photo. So that's pretty cool, as you can see. And this is important just in a sec, because the third thing we need to add are our GCP points to check if there is a bias and, and we need to apply a bias correction. And we also need to add our topo points so that we can extract the DSM points from, the, uh, from underneath of those topo points. And we can actually compare those topo points to something and get our accuracy assessment. Now, it is important to note that in our topo points, there is error um, because there is uh, just an error inherent to using a uh, differential GPS. Uh, but for the sake of the accuracy assessment, we are considering the diff differential GPS topo points as absolute truth. So we are saying that that is the ground and we are going to be comparing our uh, surface model points at those locations to our differential GPS points to get the RMSE. I've got my survey points here. They are saved as a shapefile. You could also add this as a CSV file. I just have it in a shapefile right now. So I'm just gonna drag it in here. And there we go. As we can see, those are all our topo points. And that includes our GCP uh, points that we are going to use to check if there is a surveying error, which led to a bias. So first thing we need to do is separate those GCPs from those topo points so that we can get two sets of data. It would be a very bad form to use the GCP, to use all the points to apply a vertical correction and then also calculate our RMSE from that. So we need two separate sets of data. We're gonna use GCPs uh, for potential bias correction uh, and then we're going to use our topo points for our, our MSE. The way I'm going to separate the GCPs from the topo points is really quite simple. I'm just going to open the attribute table. And then I'm going to select all the GCPs. So I know uh, I've got other GCPs in here. These are actually from a different day that I did the topographic survey. So those aren't GCPs. They're going to be treated as topo points. But these, on the other hand, are GCPs, all the ones in the 10 range. And then I believe there should be a GCP green. Here we go. So now I've got all the GCPs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just check that I have them all. So show selected features. Got the black and red. That one was on the roof of the parking garage, the green on the grass. And then I've got one through eight. So that's good. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna export just the selected ones. So export, so save selected features as, and that's gonna pull up this window here. I'm gonna save them as a shape file, just cause that is easy to use, like right out of the box. And then I'm gonna leave the CRS at that. And then I'm just gonna pick a folder. I'm gonna navigate my way to the demo folder we've been using. Forced me to click through a whole bunch of screens though, so I'm just gonna do it off screen here. All right. So what am I gonna, I'm gonna call this GCP. Should be the only shape file called GCP. Hit save. There we go, that's all I need to do. 
going to hit OK. And there we go. It's pulled up the GCP. So I can now turn this one off. And now only my GCPs are left. So that's great. I'm going to go back to here. And I'm going to extract my topo points from this. So I'm going to go to attribute table, show all selected, uh, show selected features like that. As you can see, got all my GCP points. Uh, and I'm just going to swap this. So I believe, where is it? There we go, invert selection. So there we go. Now it's going to select my topo points. Got a bunch of ground shots. Um, from the first survey, those are the base ones, and then from the survey I did on the day I flew the drone. So what I'm gonna do, minimize this again, open this up, I'm gonna save export, save selected features as, I'm gonna navigate to that folder again. Here we go, luckily this time it was already there. So I'm gonna call this topo, save, Shape file. Okay. So now I've got my GCPs and my topo separate. I can remove this one now. And we are ready to extract the points from the DSM to do the comparison to the GCP and see if we need to do a bias correction. What we're going to do to extract the DSM values from where the GCPs were measured is really quite easy. So you're just gonna go to the gear. So that's our processing toolbox. We're going to go to raster analysis, scroll down. We're looking for sample raster values. I'm gonna open that up. It's chosen our ortho photo. We want our DSM and our input layer is going to be our GCPs. So we'll just save this as a temporary file for now. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna take all the GCP uh, fields it's going to make a new layer called uh, sampled, and then it's going to tack on an additional field, which is going to be sample, I guess in this case, probably one. And that's going to be for the um, elevation values in the DSM. So I'm just going to hit run. There we go. Close that. Let's check out our attribute table. So here we go. It's got all our GCP fields. And then here we go. Sample one. It's tacked on the elevation for the DSM. So as you can see here, it looks like there was uh, some kind of bias and we need to apply a bias correction. This could be from a surveying error, um, which is possible. Things didn't go perfectly uh, on the day we did this survey. And applying one of these bias corrections is pretty common. So what we're going to do is I'm going to save this as a CSV and I'm going to bring it into either R uh, or Excel. I'm going to calculate the average difference between the measured value and the observed value. And from that, I am going to change the elevations in our DSM uh, so that we get rid of that bias. To save this as a CSV, what we're going to do is we're just going to right click on sampled here. Once again, export, save feature as. Um, so here we just change it from Esri shape file. There should be a CSV option. There we go. And let's just call this uh, sample, sample uh, DSM, call it that. Great, we'll just hit, uh, oh, actually, probably actually have to pick a folder. So I'll just navigate to the folder. Um, while I'm doing that, just earlier, I think I said uh, measured versus and observed. That That's obviously the same thing. What I meant to say is we're going to be treating the, uh, you know, the rover GPS, you know, ground points. We're going to be treating those as the known, so measured, and then we're going to be treating the um, drone shots as the predicted uh, just for our, our MSE calculation. So yeah, I'm just gonna be calling it um, 
you know, observed or measured and then predicted. So I've navigated to the folder. Um, I'm gonna hit save. Okay, there we go. So now it's saved. So the next thing to do is to open it up in either Excel or R. I'm actually just gonna remove the sample DSM here. Um, I've decided that I'll open it in Excel just because, uh, you know, that's the default program for my CSVs and it's you know, Excel won't let me edit it if it's open. So I'm just gonna close that. I will go to my folder. There's my demo folder and I'll open the C, uh, CSV. So here we go. It's the same thing we saw earlier and we just got to calculate the difference between this one and this one. So I'm just going to call this category column diff. And we'll just do a simple calculation. So equals, I guess we'll do I2 minus H2, close that off, enter. There we go. There's the difference between um, our predicted value and our observed value. And we're just going to drag that down. So as you can see, the error hovers around, well, the bias hovers around, you know, 69 something, but we can calculate that average very quickly. So I'm just going to type here equals average. There's average. So by average, I mean the mean in this case. You want to just highlight all the cells, close that off, enter. There you go. So this is the bias correction we need to apply to the DSM, um, you know, to make our results accurate. This means on average, our DSM is six, 68.8965 centimeters too high. So we need to lower it by this value. And I'll show you how to do that in QGIS very soon. For the DSM by a set amount, what we're just gonna do is we're going to go up here to raster, raster calculator. We're going to create um, a new raster. We'll just call this DSM adjusted like that. Save. And it's going to output it as a GeoTIFF, so we're keeping it in the same format. So now we just like DSM, and we got to lower it. It was 68 centimeters too high. So we got to lower all the values by 68 centimeters. So minus, paste in our value, and then we're just going to hit OK. And there we go. It calculated a new raster. I'll open it up here. As we can see, it has changed the bounds of the raster. So this is the elevation. I'll bring this one up just to here. As you can see, the elevation has changed and it should be by 68-ish centimeters. So there we go. Now that we've got this, we are ready to extract our topo points and do the RMSE calculation. Before I go in and extract all the points, I just want to check something. So as I zoom in here, I can see there is an edge effect. And this is something very common. Here, it's more obvious over here. This, these edge effects are something very common when uh, around the borders of uh, you know, drone photogrammetry. So I don't trust these points here that are closest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna select those points and I'm going to delete them. So here, if I just select this one, so there's our topo. That is just one of our topo points, and I want to select this other one too. This is just far too close to the edge to you know, make it uh, reliable, and it might mess up our, our MSE calculation. So these are the old GCPs that um, weren't actually GCPs the day we flew the drone, so GCP4, and this is GCP5. So I'm just going to open up our topo point layer, attribute table, and then I'm going to look for GCP4 and 5. So these two here, I'm going to edit, and I'm just going to delete these two because I don't trust them. And uh, when it's near the edge effect, it might have a serious effect on our accuracy. So I'm going to save edits, toggle off editing. 
And now I'm ready to extract the points. As you can see, they're no longer there. And the way we're gonna extract these points is the exact same way we did it for the um, bias correction with the actual GCPs. So once again, we're just gonna go over to our processing toolbox. Here, I'll close the identify results. We're going to go to uh, raster analysis, scroll down, scroll down, and right here, sample raster values. Open this tool up. So there we go, we're gonna use topo, our raster layer. So it's not gonna be our original DSM. We're gonna use our adjusted DSM because this is the one that has been shifted correctly for our bias correction. Click on that. And you know what, let's just save this one as a temporary layer as well. So I'm just gonna hit run. There we go. It has now sampled those points. Our temporary layer is called sampled. And what we're gonna do is we're going to export this. Well, let's have a look first at our attribute table. Here we go. So there's our sample one. And this is for all the points. As you can see, I've got 101 points. And we're just gonna go in and now we're gonna save this as a CSV again. So export, save feature as. We're gonna navigate to our folder. This one's going to be topo uh, sample. Topo sample, and I'm just gonna save it. Once again, we're gonna open it in Excel and we're gonna do our RMSE calculation in there. Now we open up topo sample here, just in Excel. And actually before I do the RMSE, so for RMSE it's predicted minus observed, as I said, the um, Predicted is gonna be our drone shots. The observed is going to be the, uh, you know, it's standard top of points, but I need to remove a couple of points here. I could have done this inside of QGIS and it probably is easier for you to do it inside of QGIS if you decide to do this step in R, but I need to remove these base station uh, points. So this one tagged base. Um, the reason why I need to remove it is because for the whole uh, drone photogrammetry process, we had a base station set up over this. So it will probably not be uh, horribly accurate. So I'm just going to delete this one. And there should be another one here. There's another base. There we go. And so oops, now we're down to just, I think 99 points is at 101. So I'll just move that up. There we go. All right. So that should solve um, those two. Those probably would have ended up with pretty poor results. And now I'm going to just do the predicted minus the observed. So equals, we're going to do I2 minus H2. Enter. And we're just going to drag this down all the way to the bottom. There we go and we're ready to calculate our RMSE. The formula in Excel is really quite easy. So I'm just gonna label this our MSE. MSE. And I've already got it typed up, I'll paste it in here. So as you can see, this is the formula. Um, we're just going through, iterating through the whole difference row we just calculated. And down here is our solution. So there's our RMSE. And as you can see, it is 17.952 centimeters, which is worse than it should be. And I know why. When I did the survey, I took a few shots in the trees. So the drone didn't have a clear line of sight to the ground. Um, this RMSE could be lower if you use the terrain model, because that kind of eliminates some of the surface features like trees. And I know for a fact that I took some shots under trees and beside um fences which could mess this up and i know there are three shots which are particularly poor oh sorry actually four shots that ended up in the trees or under something else that could have had an effect on if the drone saw it correctly or not so i know that 52 and 53 are bad these were taken kind of in the trees as you can see, 84 centimeters difference than predicted. That uh, is pretty poor. And 27 isn't quite as horrible, but it's still not great. 
So I'm going to move this over here, just get it out of our RMSE calculation. As you can see, it's already gone down to 15 centimeters. Um, I also note that 22 is pretty terrible. This was also in the trees, 33 centimeters difference. Let's ignore that one. And then there should be one more. So I think it was 122 from the first day. There we go. This I took right beside a fence. <laughs> And it ended up with a difference of 1.3 meters. So when using the surface model, it doesn't ignore any of the surface features. So you might end up with shots like this where I'm taking a shot on the ground, but the drone is taking a shot on top of a fence or in the tree. And that could have a serious impact on your RMSE. I left those in just to demonstrate how four out of 99 points can really affect your RMSE because those are serious outliers. And look at that we cut 10 centimeters out of our RMSE. So we're down to 7.7 .7 rather than 17. So even if you have four poor quality shots out of 99, it could have a huge effect on uh, the quality overall of your data. So there you go. So when it comes to doing your topo, you just need to be careful. Uh, this may look different using a terrain model and that's something I encourage you try. Uh, see if you can get that bias correction and do this RMSE calculation for the terrain model because that should eliminate some of the surface features. It may not be perfect, uh, but it would be an interesting thing to experiment with. All right, so now you've seen everything. We went from simply having photos, updating the EXIF data, bringing it into WebODM, exporting our products, going through QGIS, and then now in Excel here, we calculated an RMSE. And as you can see, uh, the, the root mean square error is only 7.7 .7 centimeters. And that's pretty good considering we flew a drone for 30 minutes and it got 34 million points. Um, and that's just compared to the, uh, you know, 99 usable points I got in twice the amount of time using a differential GPS. So I hope this was interesting and good luck with your web ODMing.